And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it was parted and became into four heads. Israelites, the time have come for you to understand that this earth is not our home. Despite the Most High dividing the earth to Noah's sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, this earth is not our home. The time have come for us to understand this truth, as well as increase our knowledge about our first home, Paradise, the Garden of Eden. I have done countless messages about the Garden of Eden. As we review end time prophecy, the righteous need to know where they will spend eternity with the Most High. Israelites and indigenous black people all over the world, don't try to understand what is spiritual with the carnal mind. It won't work. You will only become confused. The flesh and spirit are at odds with each other. That is why you won't ever understand spirit with the mind of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. A carnal mind limits your visibility and your imagination. A carnal mind cannot see what is hiding in plain sight. The carnal mind could only reason in the flesh because it doesn't have a connection with the spirit. The God of this world through religion blind the minds of many people who operates in the flesh. Israelites, when you operate in the flesh, it limits your interactions with the Most High because anyone who operates in the flesh cannot please the Most High. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. As you heard in the scriptures, the carnal mind is enmity against the Most High. The scriptures went on to say that a carnal mind is not subject to the laws of the Most High. The carnal mind cannot subject itself to what is spiritual no matter what it does. That is why when the truth is being heard, many who operate in the flesh and use the carnal mind to reason cannot understand. Everything is either offensive or unbelievable to them. That is why you often see the people who are carnal minded slandering or attacking the people who walk in the spirit. Because the carnal mind cannot understand what is spiritual, nor is it subject to the laws of the Most High, violence and wickedness is how they respond. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Israelites and Gentiles, give the Most High the opportunity to renew your mind with truth. The gospel of truth is meant to set you free. If you reject the truth, you will continue to be a slave to religion. It's through religion Satan have a stronghold over the mind of many people. Remember, religion is witchcraft and idolatry. Anyone who is under witchcraft attacks need deliverance. Religion is a witchcraft attack against everyone who's being deceived with religious doctrines. The Most High awakened the remnant to hear the truth because it's through the truth you will be made free. The Most High is trying to deliver his people through the truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As the Most High revealed the truth about end time prophecy, Israelites, welcome the truth with gladness. Don't allow the Satans to influence you to reject the truth that is meant to set you free. Religion don't only influence the people that subject themselves to religion. Religion influenced the entire beast system. It's through religion the Satans are able to control the minds of many. It's through religious rituals many people become bound spiritually to the kingdom of darkness. 
is through religious ceremonies, many people are sacrificed to idol gods. If you don't believe me, remember the altar calls in your church. It's at an altar that spirits interact with flesh. At an altar is where those two worlds collide. If the altar is an evil altar, then you are making your request to the idol behind the altar. If the altar is built to the most high, then that altar will bring you blessings and a visitation from the most high. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings, and thy peace offerings, thy sheep and thine oxen. In all places where I record my name, I will come unto thee, and I will bless thee. The Roman God that is behind the altars in the religion called Christianity is not the God of Israel. Making the God behind the altars you went to seek at the altar called an idol. The Most High awakened his people for a reason. The time have come for you to come out of her. Too many people put their confidence in religion. Not knowing the Satans are influencing you to worship and serve demons as gods in the beast religion and the beast system. And Uriel said to me, here shall stand the angels who have connected themselves with women and their spirits, assuming many different forms, are defiling mankind and shall lead them astray into sacrificing to demons as gods. Here shall they stand till the day of the great judgment in which they shall be judged till they are made an end of. As you heard in the scripture, the fallen angels are the ones influencing mankind to sacrifice to demons as gods. A lot of people believe their religion are serving the God of Israel. That is false. The religion called Christianity served the Roman God. The Roman God is not the God of Israel. The scriptures in the authorized Bible confirm that the Gentiles make their sacrifices to devils. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Like you just heard, you cannot sit at the tables of devils in religion and the table of the Most High in the awakening. It won't work, which is why the flesh and spirit are at odds with each other. The carnal mind cannot comply to the laws of the Most High. Israelites and indigenous black people all over the world, the time have come for you to realize that you've been sold a dream in religion. Satan made many promises that he cannot keep. It's through those promises, Satan have many of you bound and operating in the flesh. For the past few weeks, the Most High have destroyed the rapture doctrine. The rapture doctrine gave many people false hope and a false reality about the end times. Religion convinced many people that they would not face the great tribulation in the day of the Lord. Most people are deceived into believing they will be in the heavens to wait out the day of the Lord and the great tribulation. In addition to the rapture doctrine, Satan misled many people into believing eternity for them will be in the heavens. Last week, the Most High opened your eyes to the multiple heavens and their purpose. The Most High revealed to his people the heavens are for the children of the heavens, the angels. There's not a place for us to dwell in the heavens with the altered body we have now. Enoch had to be transformed when he was in the heavens. The Most High made Michael remove Enoch's earthly garments. And the Lord said to Michael, go and take Enoch from out his earthly garments and anoint him with my sweet ointment and put him into the garments of my glory. Removing Enoch's earthly garment is the only way Enoch could stay in the heavens. Flesh have no place in the heavens and the scriptures reveal to us that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the most high. That is why we will change when the word of God returned to gather the elect at the end of the great tribulation. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. This body we have is a temporary suit, just like everything in this world is temporary. When Adam and Eve dwell in the garden, they had a spiritual body. 
when they transgressed the laws of the garden, the Most High made them the flesh body we have today. Adam said again to Eve, what is our body today compared to what it was in former days when we dwell in the garden? But when I heard of thy transgression, I deprived thee of that bright light. Yet of my mercy, I did not turn thee into darkness, but I made thee thy body of flesh over which I spread this skin in order that it may bear cold and heat. As you can see, Adam and Eve had a body that was made to live in the garden. Once they were removed from the garden, the Most High made them a body of flesh to dwell on this earth. The Garden of Eden is where the righteous would spend eternity when the Most High reconciled his creation back to himself. The righteous would have the same body Adam and Eve had when they were in the garden. Right now, everything about us is altered. That is why the scriptures you heard in the authorized Bible in the book of 1 Corinthians said we will change at the return of the Messiah. We have to obtain that same body to dwell in paradise. Israelites, in order for you to understand the final phase to our redemption, you need to know our home. Paradise, the Garden of Eden, is our home. The Most High created us to be in the Garden of Eden, not this earth. Then Adam said unto God, O Lord, thou didst create us and make us fit to be in the garden. And before I transgress, thou madest all beasts come to me that I should name them. Too many people are fighting to make this earth their resting place in eternity. This earth is not the place the Most High prepared for us. This earth is a prison for Adam and his seed. This earth is where the Most High put us until he fulfilled the covenant he made with Adam. Satan deceived Adam and Eve into accepting his offers. As the consequence for their actions, the Most High removed Adam and Eve from the garden. The Most High set a specific time to when he would redeem Adam, Eve, and the righteous of their seed. Before we get into the Garden of Eden, most of you don't know about the covenant the Most High made with Adam and Eve. To the people who don't know what a covenant is, a covenant is an agreement or a promise. The covenant the Most High made with Adam and Eve was to redeem them and the righteous of their seed to put them back in the garden. God said to Adam, I have ordained on this earth days and years, and thou and thy seed shall dwell and walk in it until the days and years are fulfilled, when I shall send the word that created thee and against which thou hast transgressed, the word that made thee come out of the garden and that raised thee when thou wast fallen, yea, the word that will again save thee when the five days and a half are fulfilled. Then God had pity on them and said, O Adam, I have made my covenant with thee, and I will not turn from it, neither will I let thee return to the garden, until my covenant of the great five days and a half is fulfilled. But God said unto Adam, I have made thee a promise. When that promise is fulfilled, I will bring thee back into the garden, thee and thy righteous seed. Not too many people are aware of the covenant the Most High made with Adam and Eve because religion hide this truth to form their own narrative. Most of us who grew up following the religion called Christianity, we have no idea what happened to Adam and Eve. Religious leaders never spoke about Adam and Eve. The authorized Bible excluded important information about Adam and Eve. All we know is that they sinned, the Most High kicked them out of the garden, and here we are today trying to pick up the pieces. Most of us is hoping we qualify to find forgiveness of sin to receive salvation. Most people are following religious doctrines to receive salvation. A lot of people are unaware that Adam and Eve did everything that they could to be able to return to the garden. Because Adam and Eve repented of their sins and offered their blood to the Most High as a sacrifice for forgiveness of sins, that is how we became eligible to receive salvation. Then Adam said to Eve, Behold, our hope is now cut off, and so is our trust to enter the garden. We no longer belong to the inhabitants of the garden, but henceforth we are earthy and of the dust and of the inhabitants of the earth. We shall not return to the garden until the day in which God has promised to save us and to bring us again into the garden as he promised us. 
the synagogue of Satan want us to hate Adam and Eve for sinning. Religious leaders only focus on their downfall. They eliminated Adam and Eve persistence in seeking forgiveness. Religion don't teach this truth about Adam and Eve repenting and seeking forgiveness of sins. The workers of iniquity led us to believe the Most High discarded Adam and Eve for their sins. They made it seem as if the Most High didn't forgive them by removing Adam and Eve life story from the authorized Bible. The reason religion didn't tell the truth about Adam and Eve, the synagogue of Satan wanted you to focus and to accept the Roman God idol as your savior. They wanted you to look to the Roman God idol for salvation to separate you from the Most High. It's through the Roman God so many people are participating in the sin of idolatry unawares. Satan operates through deception. That is how he managed to deceive the whole world. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Everything Adam and Eve did to find forgiveness of sin, the word of God, when he became flesh, did the exact same thing to transfer the covenant to Adam's descendants. Adam and Eve shed their blood and offered their blood on an altar built by Adam to the Most High, looking for forgiveness of sins. Then Adam and Eve took stones and placed them in the shape of an altar, and they took leaves from the trees outside the garden, with which they wiped from the face of the rock the blood they had spilled. But that which had dropped on the sand, they took together with the dust wherewith it was mingled, and offered it upon the altar as an offering unto God. Then Adam and Eve stood under the altar and wept, thus entreating God, Forgive us of our trespass and our sin, and look upon us with thine eye of mercy, for when we were in the garden, our praises and our hymns went up before thee without ceasing. But when we came into this strange land, pure praise was no longer ours, nor righteous prayer, nor understanding hearts, nor sweet thoughts, nor just counsels, no long discernment, nor upright feelings. Neither is our bright nature left us, but our body is changed from the similitude in which it was at first when we were created. Yet now look upon our blood, which is offered upon these stones and accepted at our hands, like the praise we used to sing unto thee at first when in the garden. And Adam began to make more requests unto God. Then the merciful God, good and lover of men, look upon Adam and Eve and upon their blood, which they had held up as an offering unto him without an order from him for so doing, but he wondered at them and accepted their offerings. And God sent from his presence a bright fire that consumed their offering. He smelt the sweet savor of their offering and showed them mercy. As you have heard, Adam and Eve built an altar, offered to the Most High their blood to find forgiveness of sins on the altar. The Most High accepted their offer and showed them mercy. The word of God, when he became flesh, he did the exact same thing to transfer the covenant to us so that we can obtain mercy and find forgiveness of sins. Then came the word of God to Adam and said unto him, O Adam, as thou hast shed thy blood, so will I shed my own blood when I become flesh of thy seed. And as thou didst die, O Adam, so also will I die. And as thou didst build an altar, so also will I make for thee an altar on the earth. And as thou didst offer thy blood upon it, so also will I offer my blood upon an altar on the earth. And as thou didst sue for forgiveness through that blood, so also will I make my blood forgiveness of sins and blot out transgressions in it. Israelites and Gentiles all over the world, that is why the Messiah is known as the second Adam. I hope you're starting to understand the Messiah's purpose when he became flesh. Everything that happened to Adam was symbolic to what would take place in the future to the second Adam, the word of God. I hope with this background information, it will clear the confusion religious doctrines have caused. Going deep truly reveal the truth and exposes the kingdom of darkness lies. Adam and Eve spent three days and night under a rock Satan threw down to kill them. 
The word of God said to Adam that the same would happen to him when he becomes flesh. He would be in a tomb for three days and night, and on the third day he would rise. Yet, O Adam, fear not, neither say in thy heart that I have spread this rock as an awning over thee to plague thee therewith. It came from Satan, who had promised thee the Godhead and majesty. It is he who threw down this rock to kill thee under it and Eve with thee, and thus to prevent you from living upon the earth. But in mercy for you, just as the rock was falling down upon you, I commanded it to form an awning over you and the rock under you to lower itself. And this sign, O Adam, will happen to me at my coming upon earth. Satan will raise the people of the Jews. Job put me to death, and they will lay me in a rock and seal a large stone upon me, and I shall remain within that rock three days and three nights. But on the third day I shall rise again, and it shall be salvation to thee, O Adam, and to thy seed, to believe in me. But, O Adam, I will not bring thee from under this rock until three days and three nights are past. As you can see, the Messiah became flesh to save Adam and to transfer the covenant to Adam's descendants. Satan managed to cause division when it comes to salvation. Some people believe salvation is for Christians who accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. In the Hebrew Israelite religion, some people believe salvation is for the Israelites only. The time have come for you to know that forgiveness of sins was extended to Adam's entire bloodline. Adam and Eve's children are all the indigenous black people that are made in the image of the Most High. The nations the scriptures speak of are the descendants of Noah's three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Forgiveness of sins was extended to them all because of Adam. Forgiveness of sin is not only for the Israelites, but for all of Adam's seed. Israelites, don't let the Satans cause you to exclude people the Most High didn't exclude, as well as including people the Most High didn't include. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. Now that you know all of Adam's seed is eligible to find forgiveness of sins, everyone needs to understand that not all people are of the seed of Adam. By now you should know that the fallen angels fathered the other species of mankind that walked this earth. Their descendants continue to exist until this day. Adam's descendants continue to mix with the descendants of the other species of mankind, just like in the days before the flood. Many indigenous black people are diluting their seed to prove racism and discrimination is over, although they are being discriminated against every single day. The Most High judged the other species of mankind when he bound them in the valley of the earth for 70 generations, also when he sent the flood to destroy them. Once the judgment against them are over, they will be partakers of the lake of fire, the second death. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Israelites and indigenous black people all over the world, it's extremely important for you to understand that Adam is not the father to all people. Forgiveness of sins was extended to Adam's seed only. Eve, on the other hand, is the mother to all living, including the other species of mankind. The fallen angels took the daughters of men as wives to create the other species of mankind. That is why Eve is the mother to all living. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Adam is not the father to all living. It's important for you to understand this truth. That is why the scriptures didn't say Adam was the father to all living, but Eve only. It's through the covenant the Most High made with Adam that gave all of Adam's bloodline the opportunity to receive forgiveness of sins. In order to extend the covenant of forgiveness of sins to Adam's descendants, the Most High needed someone to make the same sacrifice Adam and Eve did. The Word of God offered himself to be that sacrifice so that the covenant the Most High made with Adam and Eve could transfer to the righteous of Adam's seed throughout the generations until the end. Therefore doth my father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. 
This commandment have I received in my father. Covenants can transfer from one generation to the next. In order to transfer the covenant, the Most High must find an eligible person to do so. The covenant the Most High made with Abraham to be a God to him and his seed was transferred to Isaac, from Isaac to Jacob, from Jacob to Jacob's descendants. That is why the Most High is known as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Our fathers was used to transfer the everlasting covenant from Abraham to us. Covenants, whether good or bad, can be transferred from one generation to the next. Evil covenants are transferred through generational curses. The Messiah was used to transfer the covenant the Most High made with Adam to the righteous when he shed his blood like Adam and Eve did. It's very important for us to know about this covenant because that covenant is the foundation to our salvation and to receive forgiveness of sins. As you can see, Israelites, the truth is nothing like what the spiritual wickedness in high places have taught the people for countless generations. The synagogue of Satan have altered the scriptures to fit their narratives. They purposely left out important information to get you to accept their narratives, which is why the truth needed to be heard by all people. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. The truth is needed at this time. I will not help the synagogue of Satan spread their false doctrines in the awakening at all. We must know the truth. The Messiah said that no one took his life. He laid his life down. In addition, the Messiah said in the same chapter in the book of John that he had other sheep that he must bring into the fold. To the Israelites who believe salvation is for the Israelites only, the righteous Gentiles that are of Adam's seed are the sheep the Messiah is speaking of that he must bring into the fold. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Bloodline is important with the Most High. It's through bloodline that the Most High identify the people that are made in his image and likeness. The other species of mankind use race, ethnicity, and nationality to identify a person today. When dealing with the scriptures, bloodline is what identify a person. Adam's bloodline consists of all the indigenous black people that comes from the bloodline of Shem, Ham, and Japheth, as well as all the indigenous black people that lived before the flood. The covenant the Most High made to save Adam and his seed is for every black indigenous person that ever walked this earth. The Most High made many other covenants with the Israelites. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. The covenant the Most High made with the Israelite bloodline are different from the covenant the Most High made with Adam and Eve. It's through the covenant the Most High made with Adam and Eve that gave the Gentiles access to salvation. The Messiah made the covenant valid and accessible to all Adam's seed that are righteous in every generation. The Most High didn't discard Adam and Eve. The Most High loved Adam and Eve. The reason the Most High chose Jerusalem, that is where he buried Adam. Adam's children today are unaware that Jerusalem is the resting place for the first man. And this place on which thou art standing and in which the body of Adam is laid, Will I make a holy place? All creatures on earth shall be blessed in it, and in it I will grant forgiveness unto all who come hither. Adam made it known that his body would be plundered. The heathens who plundered his body know exactly who we are and the truth. They choose to flood the world with lies to conceal the truth. The synagogue of Satan through religion made it seem as if the Most High got rid of Adam and Eve, making everyone forget about Adam and Eve as well as creating controversy about their race, will cause the people to not focus on the other species of mankind and their origin. The lack of information about the first man and woman is intentional. The scriptures in the authorized Bible said in the book of Genesis that the Most High created a garden in the east of Eden and placed a man in the garden to tend the garden. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. As you have heard in the scripture, the Most High created the man Adam and put him in the garden. The Most High didn't put the man in the USA, in Canada, in Europe, in Africa, in Australia, or in India. 
the Most High didn't put the first man in any of those continents or countries of today. The scripture said the Most High created the man from the dust of the ground and placed the man in the garden. He created eastward in Eden. The man Adam's first home was the garden. Adam and Eve didn't know anything about this earth when they lived in the garden. It wasn't until they were removed from the garden they came to this earth. And when they came to the opening of the gate of the garden and saw the broad earth spread before them, covered with stones, large and small, and with sand, they feared and trembled and fell on their faces from the fear that came upon them, and they were as dead. Because whereas they had hitherto been in the garden land, beautifully planted with all manners of trees, they now saw themselves in a strange land, which they knew not and had never seen. The scriptures you heard revealed that Adam and Eve was afraid when they entered this earth. This earth was nothing like the garden they lived in. The scripture said they have never seen this earth and they was used to being in the garden. So many people are led to believe the beautiful garden the Most High created is on this earth. Some people actually believe the garden is somewhere in Africa or the Middle East despite the fact that no one have ever seen the Garden of Eden with their eyes. Nor could they see the angels that are upkeeping the garden. There are some people that will argue and debate about the location of the garden, despite no one alive on this earth have ever seen the Garden of Eden. If the Garden of Eden was in this realm, everyone would visit it. The only way to see the Garden of Eden is in the spirit realm. The Most High must allow you to see paradise. Its roots is in the garden at the earth's end, and paradise is between corruptibility and incorruptibility. And two springs come out which send forth honey and milk, and their springs send forth oil and wine, and they separate into four parts and go round with quiet course and go down into the paradise of Eden between corruptibility and incorruptibility. The scriptures you just heard reveal that this earth we all currently live in is a foreign place. Adam and Eve have never seen. If Adam and Eve have never seen this land, the Most High placed them to live, how can we say the garden is in this realm? The scripture said when Adam obeyed Satan, they came to this place, which was this earth. The Most High said to the children of Seth that remain on the holy mountain that the Most High won't allow them to stay on the holy mountain that was below the garden. The scripture said the garden was about 15 spiritual cubits above the holy mountain where they dwell in the generation before the flood. For Seth and his children, by reason of their own purity, heard and saw those angels. Then again, the garden was not far above them, but only some 15 spiritual cubits. Now one spiritual cubit answers to three cubits of men, altogether 45 cubits. Seth and his children dwell on the mountain below the garden. They sow not, neither did they reap. They wrought not food for the body, not even wheat, but only offering. They ate of the fruit of the trees, well flavored, that grew on the mountain where they dwell. If the garden was a certain distance above the holy mountain, this would indicate the garden is not in this realm. The book of Enoch is accurate when it said the garden is in the third heaven. The authorized Bible confirmed the garden to be in the third heaven as well. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Israelites, we have to let the scriptures speak. I know many of you is used to this earth being our home. Nowhere in this world could compare to the garden the Most High created for us. The garden is beyond what you and I could ever imagine or think of. The places on this earth so many people say is the location to the Garden of Eden is not true. Some people believe ancient ruins found by the heathens and said to be the location of the garden doesn't mean it's the garden. The Garden of Eden is not ruin. The Garden of Eden is where we will spend eternity. Our rest will be in the garden. The garden is the place the Messiah said that he went to prepare for the righteous. In my father's house are many mansions. 
If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare place for you. And if I go and prepare place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. Then will I in mercy save thy soul and the soul of the righteous to give them rest in my garden. And that shall be when the end of the world is come. Israelites, you have to dream bigger. The Most High can do exceedingly above what you and I could ever think of. The scripture said, eyes have not seen, nor has it entered into the heart of men what the Most High is preparing for those who love him. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. The Garden of Eden is not here on this earth. This earth is where the Most High put Adam and his seed to live until the days of judgment are fulfilled. Israelites, the Garden of Eden is our first home. Our reality is altered. That is why we cannot comprehend how wonderful the Garden truly is. But Adam and Eve wept for having come out of the Garden, their first abode. Then God had pity on them and showed them mercy and sent his angel to keep the Garden. And there are 300 angels, very bright, who keep the garden and with incessant sweet singing and never silent voices serve the Lord throughout all days and hours. Israelites, don't allow man-made pictures depicting the garden to blind your eyes. Allow the Most High to surprise you with paradise. The workers of iniquity have made many people believe the heavens is where they will dwell in eternity. As you heard in the scriptures, the Garden of Eden, our first home, is where we will return at the end of the world. Israelites, it's important for you to increase your knowledge about paradise because that is where we will spend eternity. Now that your knowledge have increased about the Garden of Eden, it will be easier for you to understand end-time prophecy about the marriage supper. The truth must prevail at this time. Don't allow the disciples of Satan to deceive you into believing the heavens is your resting place. We was made to be in paradise, the Garden of Eden. Israelites, don't allow religious doctrines cause you to trade paradise for fairy tales. The time have come for you to finish every fairy tale told to you in religion with truth. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord.